Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is Toby. I'm the bookstop manager for South End Libraries. So um, I've helped Bob to organise today's event. I'm not going to uh, say very much because Bob has got a presentation that so long you wouldn't believe it. But um, the, the process here is supposed to be Bob is going to do his talk. Um, which is fascinating one that because I've like, looked at the, uh, the PowerPoint. And then there's going to be the chance for a question and answer session. You've all, I think, been given slips so that you can write down the question. So what we can do is, at the end, between the talk and the questions, if you hand those forward, and then I can read them out or pass them back to you, and you can read them out if you really want to be on the camera, because it's all being filmed. I don't know if it has that started. The film stopped here. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks. Um, so basically, Welcome to Bob. Thank you very much for doing this talk for us. Like I say, I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. Thank you all for coming. There's about another 19 people that are supposed to be coming along, so they may be filling up these seats as we go. So we'll try and be quiet with those people as they come in. So basically, thank you, Bob. Let's go. I mean, well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. But um, um, I mean, I'm really, really chuffed with it, all the help that I've been getting. Um, to to put this together and um, and also a big thank you to to Duncan and and Faye um, for helping me to do the to do the, the film um, because the film's actually going to be available to organisations and other and other and other charities etc that that may find it useful to help others um, in the, in the same position. As, as I, I have lived with. Um, I have um, always, um, uh, well, for, for a few years now, intended to, to celebrate 2023 because it was um, in 1993 that I was first diagnosed with PTSD and, and that was a complete and absolute mystery to me. And so, um, to to have um, uh, 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 the nearly 30 years of, of surviving and helping and, and dealing with, with um, the aspects of it and, um, and managing it and also the support I had. I just wanted to highlight, highlight those um, aspects um, and, and, and celebrate really the fact that I had survived all, all for all this time um, uh, with the help of others, obviously. and. Um, and so um, I always joked that I would be, um, I, I, I couldn't understand when you have a, uh, when you all celebrate someone's life when you um, um, come and, um, and um, have a, a wake um, at your funeral and you're the only person there with all your mates are there and they're all, you know, telling all these sorts of things. So that was the idea of us having a laugh. And um, I'll tell you more about that sort of thing. But um, when it... Um, when, when what triggered me off to um, to um, to bring it forward and to share with people, um, I wanted to <coughs> I wanted to show that um, you you can have this mental illness, but you can you can uh, survive by um, different um, techniques and skills, and and obviously the help of of therapists and, and 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 what is available with the NHS and that you and you can you can survive it. But my main aim really is is the the four things you had there that I want to I want to prevent uh, prevent suicides um, because that is something that I have to cope with. Um, the the thoughts of it, uh, but also um, share share my experience, help others to, to manage it and, um, and, and, you know, to save lives. And what, um, what kicked me into, um, into doing this is after we decided to celebrate next year was um, um, a young lad committed suicide in the, in the, road, in the road behind us and uh, He's only young fella, and, um, and I thought, why, why, why did he, why did he do that? You know, what, what was missing? What was, what was, um, 
was it something that um, someone could have helped him with? And I don't know the circumstances of it, but it just made me think that I, by, by sharing, sharing what I do and, what, and how I deal with things, it, it, it could help. So um, I haven't, I don't know the young lad, I know he was a young lad, and um, obviously very, very troubled. I don't know if he had um, a PTSD or, or anything like that, but um, he, he certainly um, had got to those dark uh, depths of, of things that, um, yeah, so, so um, what, what I'm trying to do is just, just, just give you briefly what my, my story and how I come to be and have to deal with the things that I do. Um, this was me when I joined in to join the police force here at South End in 1967, and um, Jeff, who's Jeff, who's one of the you know the, the, one of my old colleagues from here. Jeff remembers the the white helmets and how we used to um, strut our stuff down the high street. Your your, your, your uniforms was were um, were all um, tailored at Horn Brothers, and those that are old enough to remember Horn Brothers, they were. Um, um, the super duper suit people of the town at that time, and um, we had our made to measure suits there, and, and we wore the white helmets, which is my one there. And um, so I always, um, you know, valued um, the, the fact that we were smart and we were proud and we were um, up for doing the job that we, we, um, we, we swore an oath to do. So, um, and, and I'm, I'm briefly going to cover this because I want to do various other aspects as well. Um, I, was, I was subjected to, oh, I wouldn't say I was a victim, I was subjected to, to some violent assaults and serious assaults over, the, over, over my years of service. And, um, and it always, it always um, makes you think whether I was absolutely, you know, was I brave, was I stupid? You know, was I, um, you know, I was on duty during, what I, or was it just a madness in me? And um, I'm, I'm reflecting on, on that whole situation because one of the things that I've, I'll, I'll tell you about later, I've written, I wrote a book in, that was published in 2004, and I'm now doing another, another sequel to it um, that is um, going to reflect back, backwards on, on, on the, on the type of. Um, of um, things that I now recognise as I was dealing with mental health even as long ago as the 60s and 50s. And 50s. That's, that's my, my take on it, but that's the subject of another book. And, um, and I mean, Clifftown Road, it's just round the corner here, it's just over the, over the other side of Railway Bridge. Dorothy and I lived in a flat in Clifftown Road and... Um, and I was off duty, and, and and there was a bad assault, and some skinheads, and they beat me up. And then again in Victoria Avenue, um, that um, you know, there were some football yobs that had stolen some bread. Would you believe? And um, they decided to meet there. But then some would say I escaped South End and went to Basildon, and, and all sorts of things went there on there. It was. Um, it, it, it was an, an, an education, but a different education to the violence and everything that we, and, and the crowds that we used to have at South End. And, uh, but it was an education at Pazan, and, um, and I was beaten up there. Um, and then I was promoted and went to, went to Chelmsford, and there I met my mate Colin. He was a detective with me, and um, we had a... Um, a fantastic time there, but um, on one particular occasion, on a on a on a follow um, with two other detectives, I was caught on the bonnet of a car, of a getaway car, and um, my watch strap caught on the windscreen wiper, and um, and the car travelled down um, the, the Enfield High Street, 20th of December 1979. I always remember it because the, the Christmas shoppers were around, and. Um, and I'm being hurtled along on the on the bonnet of this car, and um, and uh, for for whatever reason, a metropolitan police officer who was there um, 
decided that if he, if he shot at the car with his gun, he would stop. Well, it just made the bloke go faster, and so we went hurtling down the road. Um, my, um, I was being thrown across the bonnet. My leg um, was, um, was, was dangling over the edge of the car, and that was hit by a lorry. And, and that, and um, that broke my leg. And then um, the, the, the incredible things you, you, you remember about this is that um, I realised I had some severe pains in my chest then, and that, it turned out that my, um, my lungs had collapsed and broke, broke some ribs. But um, the guy that was, that was driving the car through fear of being shot as much as anything, he, um, he pulled over to, to let me get off. And I always remem uh, remember this, this crowd of people that were on, the right, on our right-hand side. It was a little lay-by and there was like a picture house come, um, come um, um, cinema, but bingo hall. And they were all queuing to go into the bingo. And you could see the look on their faces and they see this bloke. There was bullet holes in the screen that are near to where, the windscreen near to where I've been sitting. And, um, oh, or, or laying anyway. And, um, and, um, and the, the, the incredible look, it's, it's something that's so vivid on, in, on, in my mind that, um, um, and um, I, I tried to get off my, my watch strap, but actually stuck in the, in the, in the fold of the, um, of the windscreen wiper. And um, with this, um, the two, you could hear the two tone, well, we could hear the two tone horns, and he drove off again. And we eventually turned the corner and crashed. And, um, and um, he wasn't there in a, a seat belt. And I don't think the government decided that people should wear a seat belt because he wasn't. But um, it certainly, you know, um, he, he had, and it wasn't until I hopped off, um, meaning to arrest him. I realised my leg was broken and ended up on the floor. So that, that, that was that incident. And then in, in 83, um, I, I re received some, inf some information from an informant that there was a large load of cocaine being, um, being shipped into the country. So I went there, because I'd been trained in, in undercover work by then, I, I, I went there um, in order to order part of the load so that we could then um, then move on to um, the arrest. We were working with customs and excise at that time, so, um, um, and I went up to this uh, fifth floor um, um, tenement um, building, a flat in the tenement block in Stepney, and um, I was confronted by um, several of the minders of the, of the, of the dealer who um, grabbed hold of me and, um, Put a, it was a piece of washing line, I'm sure it was a piece of washing line, because in the tenement building people had washing hanging up um, in there. And they, they put that round my neck and threw me over, or tried to throw me over. I managed to hold on, but it was, um, the rope was, um, was cutting into me. And, um, and then um, it, was, it could have been only seconds. It certainly wasn't longer than that. I was struggling. They were trying to stamp on my fingers to... You know, because they, they were shouting out that I was the old Bill, and they weren't, they weren't far wrong, but, um, um, but um, I could hear all the team that were covering me um, about to come up, um, up, the, up the stairs, but then the front door of the, um, of the flat that I was supposed to be going to opened up, and it was the drug dealer. And he remonstrated with his minders and said, no, he's a buyer, he's not the old Bill, he's, he's a buyer. So, um, and we're, seconds later, we're sitting there having a cup of tea and a biscuit in his front room, sorting out. How to, I'm sorting out how to, how, to, how to get our part of the load. Anyway, um, we... We, I managed to sort out an introduction, which you, you know you do, and um, and um, to another guy who would take it on, and then then um, customs um, they took over the job, and a couple of month, a couple of um, 
um, of months later, um, they had a, a, a large co a large container brought, uh, come into the port at Southampton, and um, and uh, they, they arrested them all. And obviously, through the intelligence that I had gathered, um, they pulled that job off. Um, anyway, so it wasn't until till um, 1993 that um, I was then told that I was having PTSD, which I'll come back to. But that's significant, that it was 10 years after the incident that I started. Anyway, you'll, you'll probably recognise um, some of those on there, but um, that's, um, that's us. And, and, and like I was saying, um, I can go back further and think that I, I know that I was going through various stages of, of this, the, the, the trauma and, and what you're left with. And, um, and, and the, these were all the sorts of things I dealt with as, as normally. It, it was something that was part of, part of our lives. Um, you know, I, I always had, um, I, I had um, unexplained opposites. They, they, I had masses of, of um, enthusiasm and um, and um, and um, uh, uh, like a zest for life, and we had parties. And Dorothy would give me permission to have a party, and we would we would fill our house and probably the garden on instances with with um, with with people and that sort of thing. And it was it um, and I and I I played football. I played you know I had hobbies, and I had a very you know, we had a close relationship, but I'd have these, I'd have these deep times um, that um, I, I, I hid from hope. And, um, and um, I would get quite emotional, but not, not at home. I, I was hiding it. Um, and I always had the idea that, that there was something that was going to um, something that was going to happen. There was something behind me that was um, not not quite right. Um, I, I I put a lot of this down to um, and, you know the, the adrenaline highs. Um, I had I was dealing with. Um, um, after, after I left um, Chelmsford, I was I was trained in, in what they called Holmes, which was an incident office thing. So I was dealing with um, um, management of the incident offices and looking at uh, murders and uh, um, investigating murders and rapes and and other serious uh, lots and lots of serious offences. So. I was going to post mortems. I was I was looking at photographs. I was looking at all different things. I don't. I'm I'm certain now that those didn't affect me. I know they have affected some people at some time, and um, and anyway. But I still had this this um, this energy, this this uh, um, this enthusiasm to do things. And I remember one of my um, one of my detective chief inspectors, who was a lovely old chap. And, um, and and Colin, remember, his, his name was Peter Farrow, and he is no longer with us now. But um, Peter put on my assessment one day, one of my official assessments. You know, Bob goes where angels fear to tread, and that is, you know, that is something that I, that I, 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 I loved. I, I was so, you know, not ambitious or anything like that. I mean, I, I was. I did get to the DI, and but I wasn't ambitious to become a, a chief or anything like that. Um, and I mean, even to the extent that I, I went through, I, I, I went to Columbia once on an undercover job. Again, um, it was a bit long and involved, but it's in my book, and in I tell more about it in my in my sequel. Um, and I'm and I always remember being on on the dock side of this um, place in Columbia. And, um, and and going uh, going along the dock, and I'd got uh, a member of the 
DEA, who was the Drugs Enforcement Agency, who were working in Colombia at the time. Um, they, um, he, I was with, with him and, and well looked after, and there's no problem, although I had a job to do with the intelligence gathering there. So, um, and I always remember walking on the dock there and thinking to myself, what the hell am I doing? Why, what am I doing? Why am I here? And, and that was one of the times that I, um, I, I questioned um, what I was doing and, and where I was in my own mindset. And, um, and at, that, at that particular time, um, I, 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 I didn't become an alcoholic, but I was one of these guys that used to have a bottle of scotch in my, in my desk drawer. And, and that was the way that we used to deal with things in, in the police service then. Um, that was, I mean, we had a, I don't think they've got them in any police stations now because of the, uh, because of the problems that the, they, the public might perceive that policemen went to their bar in their police station and um, got themselves drunk and, and drove home inebriated and all this sort of thing. But, but a bar in a police station was a, a place where we could go and off offload and we could go and we could we could talk about what we'd experienced because the only alternative was to take it home with us and, and then you're, you're putting the pressure on your family. And um, this is something that um, I, I don't think the, the, the police have actually got to grips with. I, I left 30 odd years ago, so it may be they're a lot better. But also, I found myself talking about my, the, the way that I was feeling to complete strangers, people that I would meet, not in the street, but in a pub or, or you know, in a club or something like that where, you, where you're relaxing. And I was, I was talking to strangers. I wasn't talking to people that, that I knew um, that, could, that could probably help, but actually the strangers helped. And, um, and one, of the, one of the, one of the, uh, the, the best, the, the most, um, the easiest people to talk to and to and to lean on um, was the um, was the gay community. They were people that seemed to understand me more than 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 anyone anyone else. So, but it, it, you still weren't you still weren't taking it home. Um, he, you, know, you, you just looked to others, and the, the depression was there. But then um, that would you go down to a very very low. Ebb. And um, and then next minute you'd be on a hot wire. You'd be trying to bounce through and and all that sort of thing. And um, and at, at, st at certain times I I felt so alone. Um, I could be in a, a room, of, a crowded room of the most friendliest of people, and um, I I felt quite alone. So I felt that there was nobody to talk to, and. And none of us in the in the job wanted to wanted to take it home with us, you know, because home was, you know, our our, our comfort, our you know, and that was the thing. And so, that's the. Um, um, I threw myself into um, charities and um, and I and I and I and in, in a way, and I look back on it now. In a way, I felt I was looking at, um, at, at not seeking them out, but finding that there are peop people worse off than me. And um, we, um, and this is where I involved Claire and um, uh, you know, her boyfriend at the time, wasn't it? And, um, and Dorothy and um, there, when I was at Basildon, we, we raised a lot of money for the Billericay Burns unit. The hospices were on a huge fair at, at Eastbury Lane, at the football ground there. Um, we had the Essex Police Funder, and that's where I found that the, the, the collective response of, of, of police officers then, and, and police staff, and the families, we all, we all got together to help uh, others that were, were far less better off than us. And um, I, we ran a, a, a big um, netball and football tournament for junior school um, children and high tech actually um, promoted it. And uh, we found that in business, there was a, 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 a good rapport there to have as well. So um, then I got promoted and went on to, the, um, to what was fated then as the, um, 
the UK's FBI. Well, um, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not going to down in any political people, but they fated it as that, but didn't give us any money um, to do it. Um, if I give you an example of that, um, they, they, they just wanted it for their next election. That's all it was, and it, it, it didn't fail. But we, we formed the, um, we formed the, uh, the basis, the foundation of what is now the National Crime Agency. And um, I'm pleased to say that they are probably, although I've got no knowledge of it, they're probably a lot better um, equipped to deal with things. And they, basically, we, uh, uh, I had, uh, I had 30 officers in my in my team gathering intelligence on organised crime. My area run from Shoebury through to Banbury in Oxfordshire along the Thames, from Banbury in Oxfordshire right the way up to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. And that was our area, anyone who was involved in that. And I went all over the UK, part, several parts of Europe, um, covering organised gangs. And as I said, um, I did go to Colombia, but that was before I went on to this. So, so that was that. Was that. I, was at the, I was at the pinnacle of the job that I'd always wanted to do. Undercover um, officer in charge of... Uh, lots of guys of the same of the same ilk, and um, you know um, we we did have some good stuff. But anyway, um, it was on the twenty fifth of May, nineteen ninety three. The reason I put up there is because um, that is the that is the day in in May this year that I we are celebrating that thirty years of um, me surviving because that was the very first time that um, I really had. I didn't quite have a total breakdown then, but it was two days later when I was in London, and I uh, was well, coming back from London, and um, and that was a, I was a, I was in we were I was sitting at the rockery of Leonard's Lee Garden. I don't know if anyone's been there, but the rockery is um, is a is a, a raised point, and there's a little seated area. And I was in there, and I, I just totally lost it, and. Um, it was a lovely day out with, with a big group of friends, all the family and the girls, and, you know, we was having a lovely time, and, um, you know, and, and so it was, it was totally uh, out of the blue uh, how it happened. Um, as I say up there, I, 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 I got into a vegetable state. I had no control. Um, I tried, you know, I lost my mind trying to do it. And it, it ended up on me having a, having a breakdown a few days later. But that is why I want to celebrate on the, on the 25th of May this year, because it's 30 years and, um, and dealing with it. Um, I went, after that, I went through a period of time where I was in a, in a, in a no man's land. Um, I was unable to get out of the house. Um, um, it, was, it, was, it was awful. For Dorothy and the girls, because they hadn't seen me um, like this before, I, I just had I just had um, a terrible fear of of getting out and um, and and being this outgoing person, and, and I, uh, I just I just completely lost lost my abilities, and um, and um, and it was then that I I first started to look at, uh, look at um, suicide. When I say I look at suicide, I mean, as, as police officers, we, we've been to so many the results of suicide, and that, that's one of those things that um, I, I have um, sympathised and empathised with so many people um, when that happens. But that is something that, um, in my particular state, um, it is something that is the only option out, and you, you, know, you, and you can't, you, 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 you don't know why, it, you know, you, you're thinking like that, but, um, but, it, it, but to alleviate yourself from the, from the, from, from the, where you are, the stage that you are, um, um, to release as well um, your family from you know, having to deal with such, to me, stupidity, um, 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 suicide was 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 is is always a, a, a depth that um, I, I I've got into or I've, I've been got into, and it was then 
that um, over the period of year, over the period of um, the following year, that um, I I was so lucky that I had um, the the the, uh, the help of senior officers in the police that knew me and knew that this was alien to anything they'd seen in me. Um, they um, and 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 they had um, and I was given the um, assistance of therapy and counselling. By a um, um, by the priory um, um, and um, um, s um, health service, and um, by one of the only psychiatrists at that time who um, in the country that knew um, knew how to 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 deal and recognise PTSD, and when they said you got PTSD, I I I first of all looked at stress and. Um, the word stress, and I thought, if someone, if someone, of one of my team had said, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, boss, but I'm, I need to have a few days off because I'm feeling very stressful. I would tell him to sling his hook because I just wouldn't have entertained that. So that was, that was one thing that really you know, firmly entrenched in my mind. And then, um, but then when people explained it to me. Um, it started to fit in to what I'd been, uh, been you know, going through. And so I, I, I accepted it. And that was the important thing for me, was accepting it at a, 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 a stage when... Um, a stage when you can um, bring yourself to some sense of... Uh, some sense of... Um, of um, the ability to be able to to, to understand and, um, and 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 it then f then things fell fell into place. So um, and then I I started on a I started on a on a on a route that um, that I think is going to help others others really. Um, when I retired when I was retired from the police force in ninety four. Um, I, I didn't realise that after you reply for this police, from the police force, a big door closes, and um, you, you, and you, you don't realise this until it actually it actually comes, and um, because the, the police always, when you're in in the job, they always say about the police family, and it, it, it is a family because you do look after each other, you do help each other, and and because. Um, it's a vocation. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not a job. It's a vocation, and um, so anyway. I, but all therapy and counselling stopped. I got no assistance whatsoever from the police or from the police federation. Um, unfortunately, um, the GPs at that at that time didn't really understand what I was what I was um, what it was about, and I was and I was given Prozac. Well, that. That sent me into a into a zombie, um, state. <laughs> a zombie state. Thank you, darling. I knew, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, and I I didn't want to be in a zombie state. I wanted to I wanted to deal with it. Um, the NHS um, psychiatric part wasn't really equipped to deal with it because there was a little understanding, and and basically I, I was on my own. Um, or we were on our own. Um, then um, you had the the added the added thing um, was that um, when you're completely alone like that, you 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 don't know where t to go to, and 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 through the GP and and, and other help, there there wasn't anywhere else to go. Um, the um, the um, we had um, very difficult times because when you get retired from the police force, they give you a, a medical pension, which when I was medically retired, you get a medical pension, but you have to go to assessments all the time. And every assessment was a big, uh, a, a big struggle because it was um, someone judging you and the people judging you hadn't got a clue what it was about. So it was a big, uh, a big circle. And... So, but that, that's for another time. Um, 
but also struggling financially to have your to have your um, your salary um, reduced by two thirds, so you only get a third of the salary. So you can't, um, you know, you, you you've got to do something. So there was I had to search for employment, um, and I, I, I which I will I will I will, co I will cover in a minute, um, and also. Um, um, seeking out to be normal, seeking out to not only to be normal, but to be accepted to be normal. Um, um, good, um, oh, they wouldn't, they're not good mates, but colleagues of, of mine, uh, you would see some, some, you know, a, a, a couple of occasions, they would come towards you and or be walking towards you and suddenly cross the road as if you know to to ignore you because at that stage. Um, stress was still considered by, by the police and, and other agencies. It's you know you can't single it out as as something that is um, that they don't know about. Um, in all fairness, and um, don't know how to deal with it, and um, they um, 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 almost look at you as if you're weak and and and, and those sorts of things, and so. They'd rather cross the road than, than see it, and in, in some respects, as well, um, some of them. Um, or in fact, one particular bloke in introduced me to another friend. He said, "Oh, this is this is Bob Craven, and he worked the system to retire early." And you think, you know, what what sort of mentality is that? You know, you know, no good. You saying I'm bad because you know it's a thing. But anyway, don't. <coughs> Dorothy and I, we 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 um, we we tried to work out what was, what was what was happening to me that was creating this situation. So we did long lists of of, of, of what could be triggering off the, the flashbacks and and other and other things that um, that we we had long lists of every bit of food that I ate, every place that I went, even smells. And gradually we did work out that there were certain aspects. Of what we could do, but in that in that ten year period, between 1993, 94, and and uh, 2000, I had five complete breakdowns. That um, you know, because it was just despair, and um, and that's so. Um, we um, when I retired, we looked we looked at different aspects of what I could do. You know, who's going to employ? An old copper who's a nutcase, basically. That's what we are. That's what we're thinking. Uh, we're uh, my, still thinking that. And um, and um, we bought an old we bought an old car with a little bit of money, and we did weddings, and um, we did weddings, and Dorothy did the flowers, and we called ourselves perfect partners, and um, it worked out very well. But um, um, and we we started to do work for Havens. Um, the the, the charity at Havens, they had a, 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 a um, fair at Parry Park where we got people to guess the mileage on the car and, um, you know, on payment and a little prize afterwards. And we did things like that, which was great. But unfortunately, um, driving the car, um, I was getting fumes from the, from the car and um, I found that I was, my flashbacks that were caused by the PTSD was caused by the fumes. So, um, so we had to pack that up, and and um, anyway, so really, I had to reconstruct my life around the possibility of it, of it, of flashbacks and other things being being um, being caused. But as I say, we had to reconstruct life around the around the whether the whether you call it an illness or a disability, it doesn't matter. It it, it mucks you up in life. So we had to reconstruct our lives to, to do that. And we did the perfect partners, we tried that. And also, um, I, I was being asked, because as, as, a, as an ex-detective inspector, we used to do analytical work for big operations. And, um, and um, I was being asked by various companies and, um, and, the, um, and solicitors and barristers uh, if I would do... Um, um, court case files, etc., and so I set up a legal support group. 
that had the same enthusiasm and adrenaline that was there to achieve something. That had, I hadn't lost that. And at one time, um, we actually subcontracted, because it was Dorothy and myself and, and a couple of other um, colleagues, um, we, we set this up and, um, and we actually subcontracted over 40 retired detectives to work on these huge frauds and um, um, on behalf of the defence. Hated doing it on the op for the opposition, but it, it, it was a job that had to be done. And also, it was a, it was a way of, of earning money. But um, that, that stopped because I, I, I did have a breakdown, but um, it wasn't associated with the job. It was, it was more to do with the fact that my, black, my flashbacks and the, my blackouts really got worse. And um, because I was starting to have those, for some reason, I would be, uh, be triggered by something and bang, I'd be gone. And, um, and the diarrhea and, and diarrhea and sickness is associated with the PTSD and, and everything that goes with it, your whole body reacts to it. Um, that, was, that got worse as well. And, um, but I, I, I mean, I had a little job as a, as a registrar. I might have married some of you, I don't know. Or been or, or be on your wedding on, on your wedding um, certificate. Um, I, that lasted a month at the civic centre, and I spent most of my time in the toilet. And it was then that I had to stop. And um, and the GP told me that um, I, it, you know, she advised me that I had to stop trying to beat myself up. And, um, and, and relax and, and try and deal with what I'm doing. So she, you know, she recommended that I stop all sorts of work. But um, that didn't stop me from, from doing other things as well. So um, it was about that time that, um, that I, I um, was then diagnosed with, um, with, um, with asthma. And it's now the chronic asthma are bordering on on uh, COPD, and um, and that unfortunately has has um, a, an effect on the flashbacks, and also on the asthma itself. Um, if I'm if I'm if I'm have a, a PTSD flashback for some reason, um, then I um, then I go through the breathlessness and the, and the closing of the lungs and and um, quite painful chest and, um, and that then causes an asthma attack and the asthma attack can, can trigger off that. And, um, and probably no need to tell you what happens with, with asthma. You know, you, you, your whole body seems to um, close up with choking and coughing and, um, and also that leads to chest infections as well. So um, um, that, and that, and I normally have those sorts of episodes every six to eight weeks, and that 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 in that that does, does then relate to the the asthma, other uh, to the PTSD, um, the um, but also I I find now that I cannot go into um, smoke smoky places or or, or anywhere in the street um, where there's these, there's car fumes, etc. So there's, there's there's areas that I, in South End, that I cannot go in, and and, no, and London uh, is at the moment a no no, a complete no no because um, other people who who are addicted to um, to nicotine, um, they don't realise what they're they're doing to to people like me, and. Um, and so, and also, I find that um, it's um, crowded, noisy places. I mean, at, at the moment, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I've got a crowd here, but I, I feel quite comfortable here because, um, you know, um, um, uh, that is the way it is. But I, I, I can be, um, one of our friends had a 50th wedding anniversary and in a big hall and there was lots of noise, lots of cats going, but I had to come out for a little while and and take a few minutes and then come back in again. So I, the things you recognise and you can deal with, and I'm sure that there are other people that have similar things to me, because everyone who's got, who's, 
everyone who's got a mental illness of some sort is one individual. There is no one aspect that you can say there is a golden pill or there's a, an answer to everything. Every single one is, is, is um, got their own individual stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell people um, um, that uh, when, 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 you, when you, you go to those dark times, when you go to those, those, um, those pits of dis despair that you, 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 you're in, that um, you look at everything and, um, and, and you, you must try and bring yourself out of it. You've got to try. But you must... must um, um, you must be positive about it, which I'll come on to in a minute. But um, and I and I look a thing, and, and Dorothy and I have discussed it because when it came up in the counselling, it said discuss it with your partner, discuss it with your family. You know, if this is what you're you're thinking, then then it's well worth bringing other people in because they can do. It. And and we 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 talked about it. We said it was selfish, and un, un, understandably selfish for you know very reasons. And like I said, um, as police officers, we, we deal with aspects of, of suicide, incidents of suicide. And, and do you really know, you know, do you really want to hurt others? Um, because making that decision yourself is, is then got, co co uh, it then um, you've got problems that's creating for others. And as police officers, we had to deal with the aftermath of that as well. So, and... But my my attitude has been um, it um, doesn't solve anything. It, it's not the best way because there are other good ways of of creating a life for yourself without going down that awful road, and um, and it doesn't re release the family from the problem because um, um, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, an idea of that. Um, when I wrote the, the book in two thousand and it was published in two thousand and four, I was on. I, I was interviewed uh, by um, um, BBC Essex, the radio station, and also Look East. And as a result of that going out, um, a, f a family from, um, and, and reading the book, that a family from um, Buckinghamshire somewhere, whose um, uh, who the father, husband, had, had committed suicide, who was a fireman, um, he, um, um, he committed suicide, but they never understood why. And they're still questioning why, and um, and so you're getting out of the game yourself by doing it, but you're leaving all this debris behind you. So it doesn't release the family. So if you think about that aspect, that's what I'm trying to say. So um, and one of the, one of the one of the th things I I was very adamant about is this is still in a way the adrenaline of my previous job kicking in. Um, is me confronting something and attacking it and, and beating it rather than, you know, head in hands, you know, in, you know, in despair yourself, bring yourself out as best as you can. So, um, where does it end? Well, it it, in, it doesn't it it doesn't end. You just get better at managing and dealing with it, and that is the what I want to get over to people. Um, at, at, at one stage, my blackouts worsened and I had to, I had to stop driving. Um, it, was, it was part of the, the medical uh, profession said, it was part of the, um, um, me sorting out the right medication for the asthma and, and everything else that was doing it. And, um, and you had allergies that um, were co were caused in it, and um, and it was a reaction to the drugs, and they were sorting out. They were sorry, they were sorting out the medication, so I had to stop driving. But that was for 15 years. I stopped driving, and um, but then after a while, I got better at dealing with it, and it was the GP that suggested that I could go back to driving because. My depression was as much as anything. I couldn't get out, and I couldn't do this, so I had to balance bits. So, 
and I'm and I'm back to driving. Dorothy still thinks I'm I'm driving like an old man. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did point out to her that I I we used to drive at 120, 140 miles an hour around on surveillance. So I've done all that. I'm not a boy racer anymore. So I just like relaxing and driving. Anyway. Um, it can be slow and frustration. I still get angry and, and aggressive. I'm still searching for answers because that is the way that I'm fighting. And we're still still looking out for lists and all different aspects to it. And I, and I feel that sometimes I'm not in control, but the vast majority of the time I am in control. I've taken control of it myself. Um, and, and, I, and I feel... Good for, for doing that. So this is one. That this this is something that I'm 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 very um, passionate about and trying to get hold of, over to other people. Um, calm, positive future. That is one of the one. That is um, uh, when I was with a, a clinical psychiatrist a couple of a couple of years ago when my asthma was really bad and we were looking at trying to discover what was the best thing to be able to do with it, um, um, he, he suggested that we, um, that we um, you know, looked at words that I could use, I could keep on a piece of paper and, um, and I decided on those, on those calm, positive uh, future was, was, was the things I'm trying to trying to, to tell people is that is the way that I um, try and deal with things now um, in, that, in that aspect. So um, this, is, this is what I'm trying to get over to other people that are going through the same thing, is um, controlling my breathing. Um, when, I'm, when I'm really bad with my ASSA, I'm on the top amount of medication apparently of according to the review I only had on the other day. I'm on the top um, amount of, of it, of, of medications and inhalers that I can, that I can use. And, um, and so um, I, um, I, I control and I breathe in at the count of eight and I breathe out at, uh, as long as I possibly can. And the longer you can, you can breathe out, the better. And that has the effect. Don't ask me the physical, the biological ways of doing it, but it, it does work. But it does take a little bit. When you're in a, a real dark place it, and you're in a difficult place and you're struggling, it is very difficult to do. So to be able to do it, you are halfway there if you only do it a couple of times. Talking as well. What am I doing here? I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking and sharing what, what I'm doing. Talking to others when you are, when you are able to, uh, and 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 share your your thoughts and what's happening to you, so people can, you know, help you. Even if it's just a, a um, even if it's just someone to to soak up your 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 um your thoughts. Um, I write down all sorts of problems and compare, which I'll come to in a minute. Exercise and hobbies changing my picture, which I'll, I will come to in a minute, and um, volunteer and avoidance. Unfortunately, because of the way that um, um, I have to deal with things, I have to avoid things. Um, Dorothy and I, we talk a lot about um, what we're going to do and where we're going to go. All right, our, our abilities are... are um, are somewhat worse because we're getting older, but um, I'm talking about avoidance of of going to places. I've already said. I mean, um, I avoid um, Haygate Avenue, which is the road between the Royals and Premark. Now it was BHS, and there's a row of cafes there, and everyone who sits outside those cafes smoke. So I have to avoid going down there, and actually. It's not so bad as it was because the taxis on the other side of the road are always on a, um, are always idling and they're with their diesel motors, but most of them are hybrid cars now. So that's not so bad. But I avoid going in there. And I have to be on the lookout of anyone that's walking around with, 
with a um, uh, with a um, a vapor a vapor thing because being enveloped in a strawberry flavour when you're standing at a pedestrian crossing is not the ideal atmosphere to be in. And, um, and obviously, and, and uh, the cigarette smoke speaks for itself. So yes, yeah, so, and also we plan ahead everywhere we go. Um, as much as anything, um, and because I'm getting old, toiletry situation is there, but I have a problem if I have a flashback, I have a sudden, diarrhoea or sickness. So if we're on a drive somewhere, we have to plan where all the places are that we can stop. So planning ahead. So Do it's... You want to know where the toilet side is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Um, did, this is just to give you an idea what, I'm, I, 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 what I write down. I sort out in my own mind um, and um, this is just one of sheets and sheets of paper that I've, that I've written out. On the, on the left hand side is the negatives and on the right hand side the positives. In the middle you can see is calm and positive future. On the left hand side is everything that I, that I go through, um, um, all the negative aspects. But, oh, but also on the other side I put all the positives, all the sorts of things that that counteract the dark, so the light counteracts the dark. So what I'm suggesting to people is if you are going through some sort of stages like that, is to write out as much as you can so that you can compare, you can say, yeah, I had that dark bit, but I've got this, this light bit now, you know, and so th things might be bad on that side, but on this side, they're really good. So that, that is one of the aspects that I do, is is changing the negatives to positives and your, 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 your darks to light, your darkness to light. Um, my other daughter, Karen, she runs a company called Simply Stride. She started out 20 years ago, um, you know, um, working out a, 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 a system of, of holding yourself and we've all been subjected to her, to her commands. She's, um, and, um, and, and this, when I was really bad in the, in the late 90s, I was walking around, I, was, I had a stick because of other problems with my legs, well, when I was broken, it's, it's arthritic now. And I was really down at mouth, I was really, um, um, really down in the dumps, that's the only way to put it. And, um, and, um, and Karen, throughout the years, she has, um, or simply stride with her coaches, they have worked out a way to be Upright and and um, and and you know walking tall and and you know in mind and in body and 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 getting out in the fresh air and also making friends. So if you if if anyone is 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 affected by mental health, is get out there and be be proud. Be you know walk tall and 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 you will you will make friends and you will be surprised the amount of people that have got the same sit or in the same situation as yourself and and getting out there and doing it so um i um i've got hair there that, <laughs> that was only taken last year honest um um i i love my garden and i'm very fortunate to have a garden but but it doesn't stop there um you can find gardens you can find things to do you can find lots of aspects um, I have got, um, and I've identified in, in, in our garden at home, and also in, um, in various parks around it, little bolt holes where you can go and sit. The Old World Garden in Priory, in Priory Park is one place. You can sit there, you can be quiet, you can take in the aspects, you can watch the little robin, you know, and, and, and all this sort of thing. You can relax. But also it's energising as well because you can, get your, you can get your fitness in it. And, um, and also... Um, there are other, there are other, there are organisations around that are are hugely um, successful at bringing people together. And um, I mean, I did gardening with the U3A. Um, run we, Dorothy and I run the gardening group there, and got lots of lots and made lots of friends, went to lots of places, <coughs> and um, and trust links, which I think you'll see some of the some of their brochures are up there on the leaflets are here. Trust links is another 
hugely um, successful job for anyone who hasn't got a garden or who, who's got a relative that they want to get involved with. Um, you don't have to be green-fingered. You, you can just go there and be happy. Um, and obviously through that you get a little bit of energy or a li little bit of, of um, relax you get relaxation because you can sit and you can you know, while the day, time away and you get a great deal of satisfaction when you see, I mean I get great delight out of working at you know, Wisteria this time of year so you get some lovely blooms. So gardening to me is a, is a rude aspect. And also when I have my, the worst times are when I have my, the, the, the asthma episodes every, every four to six to eight weeks depending. And, um, but um, um, I, in, my, in, in my room, um, when, I, when I go through those, those periods, it's, it's normally, uh, in flashbacks, it's normally, unless it's triggered off by something, it's normally at night. And um, so I can wake up and I've got on my, on my wall um, various things, memories of, of happy times, of, of places we've been to. Um, the, the garden at Bournes Green, I worked with, with, the, with the children there. And there's, you know, there's photographs of, my, of our family look, and every photograph that, of Dorothy and me at my various stages of, of happy marriage. Um, And, um, and, and the, things that, the, the things that create in your own mind the happy times and the things that can bring you out of this, this mire of, 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 of uh, you know, or mental mire, I could say. And on the right-hand side, there was a, there's a, um, just a little picture. Dorothy's got a bigger picture in her room, but now I've got the end bits there. And they're just enough. They're just enough for me to um, to say that is a, a field up in um, up in um, or reminds me of a field up in up in Norfolk. In fact, somewhere you want to go to, Colin. Um, the, 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 it's, it's called the Vicarage, I think, and um, it's a, it's a field up there. It's a field of cornflowers and that sort of thing. It is absolutely beautiful. So it's those sorts of things that all right, I'm able a lot of the time to click. Into, into place and to remove the struggle that I'm having with the mental and the asthma side of it to calm me down and then get back to calm and positive and oh I'm looking at the past there but I'm looking at the future because we've got lots of other stuff to go and um, yeah so next one also I I've, I've wear a bracelet and I'm not, I'm not, um, it's in here somewhere. But it, I wear this all the time. And uh, it's, it's got calm, positive future on there. And um, it's just a reminder that I've, I've got around my wrist that um, I can go like that to. And um, it gives me that when I need it. Yeah. It's the only piece of jewellery, apart from my wedding rings, that Dorothy's allowed me to <laughs> He's got lots. I think you might need a world to do <laughs> <laughs> um, Next one, sir. Um, I said about the charity thing. Um, it, I'd, I'd really retired from doing charity things a, a couple of years ago because of, of how I've been. But, um, but, um, but, but seeing um, this young guy that... Um, um, that, that committed suicide and, and the help that I got from Mind in the past and the, and the help that I've got from um, Asthma UK and, and um, the, uh, the um, British Heart Foundation because I've had to have heart, heart surgery as well. So um, um, that sort of thing has just spurred me into, into sharing with yourselves that you can support other people, you can help other people and uh, and uh, lots of all the all the all the, the charities that we helped in the past um, that I that I've got other stories to tell about, but that has spurred me to do that. So I'll be walking, the, I'm going to be walking the pier thirty times, uh, not in one go, <laughs> but um, and the, but the notices are, um, are up the back there if you have a look at, and also there's some um, 
the QR codes and, and everything for the charities at, at, the, at the back, at the details at the back there. And um, all that's there. And, and uh, I see Keeley's there from Mind. Oh, hey, Robin, sorry. And, um, and they're there from Mind. They're, they're there to answer any questions that Mind. Wonderful charities that have helped me. There are hundreds and well, thousands of charities that you know you could you could wish for. But from and the reason I am the reason I am doing these is because these are the three that have been crucial to me of helping me. Um, so there we go. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing on on um, Thursday the 25th at the Park Inn. The reason why we've chosen the Park Inn is the Laurel and Hardy suite at the Park Inn. It's just hilarious. That it's, you know, those that can remember, some of you are a bit young to, rem to know about Laurel and Hardy. But um, the Park Inn were very good when I, when I um, pushed the boat out with, when I wrote the book way back in 2004. Um, and they gave us two rooms for me to, to then, and they've done done the same this time to do it. And there's going to be um, an exhibition of um, of all the all the, the different charities and the organisations that have been part of my life. That I'm saying, go and have a look, see what they've done, for, what they're doing, because they did for me what they could do for you. So that's um, that's basically what it what it's all about. Um, now, she's going to be a bit hard, so you're going to have to bear with me on this. I think I'm at the stage. This is, this is a poem, what I wrote. <laughs> I did an Eric and Ernie. I think, yeah. um, oh, well, sorry, my book, the book's there as well. There's copies. There's copies of my book there. If, if you if you'd like a copy, it's half the price of the ones that are on Amazon. If you haven't had a copy yet, um, they're there, and that and that includes um, um, a donation to um, to um, to the, the charities. So um, they're they're available. But also there are there are copies available through the library as well. So um, you know because I want. I want it to be available to anyone that, that can afford to buy it and to those that can't afford to buy it. So, and th but that is more or less only half the story because it's, it's, the, it's the carrot I'm dangling so you can buy the next one. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Right, um, I'm going to try and say this. Um, it, uh, yeah. I'll try, so I'll have a glass of water as well. Yeah. <laughs> I used to write, I used to write poems actually to Dorothy when I was waiting to go into court to give evidence on for the prosecution, not waiting to go into court for <laughs> um, for anything else. And um, but I, I, and I so and I've written a few for birthdays and things like that so you but you have to bear with me because I'm not the poet laureate by any means but um, it will be it will this it, I think this covers this covers everything that um, I've tried to be saying trying to be saying yeah so I put my glasses on that might help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better Right. Uh, feeling low, feeling sad. Life can be rubbish, but it really, really isn't that bad. Things often seem in total despair. Trust me, trust me, I have been there. Stay calm, take it easy. Slow is the message to see through this difficult passage. Your thoughts of negativity can be changed to pictures of positivity. The dark is the past, the future is bright, full of wonderful, amazing, brilliant light. And for you, that will last and last and last. C. 
Samaritans will talk, a problem to share. There is always someone who will listen and care. Think of those who love you and how upset they'll be if suddenly you're not there. The charity mind is well worth a try. They supported me often, even gave me a shoulder on which to cry. Providing support for so much in body and soul, they will help you recover from that horrendous hole. You are not alone. Be open, be clever, be strong. Focus on outside your mind. You won't go wrong. Walk tall, exercise, breathe in that fresh air. Lifting spirits, rinsing out, someone will join you and surprisingly share. Nature and the garden will give you ease. Look at the flowers the trees and the bees. They are there for you to, and please, smile all the time, not down at your knees. Life is hard, but never despair. Someone will always be there. You are always in control, and others do care. Your strength and self-belief is always somewhere. Think of others, it's true. You may have your problems, but they have lots too. Their issues so complex and so drastic and utterly sad, they inspire us to realise our situation is actually not that bad. Volunteering and giving is so satisfying and good to help others in distress is fulfilling and should bring you comfort and joy in a way that you would never imagine you could. The payback you receive is a hundred times satisfying. To be warned, but be warned, their joy and appreciation can yet leave you humbled and crying. Friends and family have had it hugely difficult in the past, but with their love, patience, hope and trust, turning bad into good, making life such a blast. Always be calm and positively strong. Look to the future and you'll live a full life for long and long and long. Next one. If there is another one. <laughs> well, that, that, that is really um, all, all we're going to have. If, if we can have just a short break, because I, I think there might be some questions. Uh,